Here's the very ending now. Zoo Boys, Chapter 15, Part B. Hanson barked, Okay, spit it out. I don't have all day. Yeah, okay, uh, there was a man. John Hanson was puzzled. A man? Yeah, he claimed his name was uh, Robinson Crusoe. He called in to me and I reported to you. He was with the four boys on the island in the zoo, but he disappeared before your rescuers got there. Over the phone, he said he was your man. He claimed he was under there under your authority. It sounded fishy to me. My man. No, he's obviously an imposter. That is very fishy. Fishy indeed. I've not hired anyone in that capacity. Nor was I even aware that someone would dare live on my island. John Hansen turned around to speak face to face with his two men. Look into that as soon as we get back into the limo. Also, I want to speak to the air crew that run security over the island. Someone is not doing their job, not being nearly thorough enough. He was fuming. He turned back to face Wilkes and Stern and projected more of his anger onto them. He spit out his words like a venom. Did you say Robinson Crusoe? Ugh, my God, come on. I hate this business of knocking down spider webs. All the lies and false alibis are just that, spider webs. People not doing as they are told to do and others doing things they are told to not do. I'm growing tired of all these sins of omission and commission. I swear I'll knock down one web just to find another one. I shudder to think that one day, eventually, we will all be caught up in one of these awful, messy, sticky traps. Bob wanted to spit back, look who's talking, pal. Hanson's words reminded everyone in the room that they too were involved to the point of being accessories to the crimes committed. Hanson's attention was always and only on anything that formed a web blocking his own will, his own selfish way of doing things. Bob mulled over what was just said. He kept his words to himself. The spider spins the webs. Lies. Webs. They all come from the spider. That was the first time he realized that he himself was a lie-spinning spider. Just the thought of speaking made him start to cough. Ah, ha, I, excuse me. He turned his head. Hanson acknowledged Bob. It's the dust down here. You should see an allergy doctor or clearing up this messy place. Your cough won't stop until you address the issues causing you to cough. Once again, John was struck with the undeniable allegorical meaning behind Mr. Hanson's words. He wished he had never taken part in the lies he had been spinning for years. He asked himself, is it too late to come clean? And if I do, hmm, would it be worth the consequences? Even worse, he knew Hansen was going to take responsibility. I'm sorry. Even worse, he knew Hansen was never going to take responsibility for his own schemes and deception. Bob let out a resounding, Ah, He pulled a handkerchief from his pocket and wiped his nose. John Hansen's voice cut into the thickening, dusty air. Funny how we can't always see what causes us to sneeze. Anyway, are we done now? Men? Boys? Everyone nodded. They knew they were done when John Hansen told them they were done. For the present company, money spoke louder and was more desirable than just words. As he and his boys left, Hansen could be heard mumbling, Robinson Caruso, psh, I wonder if he has a man named Friday with him. The door slammed from Hanson's exit, 
and Bob sneezed again, his boss replied, We really do need to clean up this mess. Bob thought he meant all the false tales and downright deception holding up Zoo Island. Then, removing all doubt, Wilkins finished what he was saying. But then again, it's easy to just leave the dust down here while we work in clean air upstairs. After all, we gotta just rise above it. Everyone has a little dust in their basement. Bob took it a step further. Or a skeleton in their closet. Wilkes was familiar with the saying, but didn't make the connection Bob was trying to make. They all approached the stairs. Uh, as they approached the stairs, Wilkes said, Get that intern, uh, what's his face? Bob inserted, Glenn. Yeah, get Glenn to come up, uh, come up. Clean up the dirt down here. Glenn heard them returning up the stairs. He quickly kick, clicked off the two-way walkie-talkie he was using to listen in. He, too, was being pulled into the issues at hand. This was Glenn's opportunity to flow with it or go against the dangerous current. Glenn called his fellow intern, Karen. He shared with her what he heard in an attempt to get her involved. At the time, she was preoccupied with joy. She found herself swept up in relief at the news that they found her missing brother, Jeremy. It was a pleasant distraction and prevented her from becoming another accomplice, at least for now. As strong as her civil rivalry was, she was so happy when she got word that Jeremy was okay even if he was in police custody, he was alive and well. Karen had her own set of choices to make now. She knew she couldn't control what happened around her, but she could decide how she reacted to it. Her level of self-awareness and consideration of others continued to grow mature from this point on, not just in the steps she took in regarding her career in writing, but in the renewed care in fighting for, not against, her family. The Northport Post ended up covering the boys' temporary disappearance, including pictures of the boys, and the word alleged was used over 15 times in the one article. The paper stayed out of anything that offered credibility that the boys were found anywhere else other than in the dangerous waters just off the main shore, shoreline of De Venice Beach. They brushed over the testimonials and confessions the boys made while, in, while being interrogated. The paper was sure to sweep under the rug any facts the children offered, claiming that they, quote, made up tales, unquote, in order to not be caught doing something that was cure clearly against the law risky and, sim and simple, simply in the wrong. It was, clear, it was made clear that the juveniles were being accused of several crimes punishable by law. By now, the lies appeared to be more believable than the truth. Everything was turned upside down. Glenn felt forced to write and print lies, making them look like the truth. Once again, the Truth was successfully spinned into looking like a lie. All accusations and blame was thrown fully onto the adolescents. Glenn was sure to insert the quote his mentor gave him. Involving Zoo Island, any part of our press release and or articles on the missing boys simply does not meet our legal threshold. That statement was the only time the words zoo or island were mentioned at all, other than a follow-up statement. If the boys had truly trespassed, they would be safer on that island than in their own backyards. The paper, as it always had done before, discredited everything the boys were saying while, in, while it pushed to the forefront the falsehood that the boys never made it further 
than just a short distance out from the sandy shorelines of the Snook Haven campground. The people who lived in the city of Northport and Venice knew that that was a far cry and quite a great distance from Zoo Island. The paper let everyone's assumptions rule. The parents were first contacted by fictional law enforcement working for Hanson. The boys insisted on telling the truth right from the start. Having survived the zoo equipped them with a new found wisdom. The four of them agreed that the game of lies they were playing could have ended a lot worse. The reality was that they might not have even been found or rescued. The young men made a vow to each other, promising to start telling the truth from the very start, regardless of the consequences. They agreed that if the truth was told from the very beginning, all the other complications would have never unfolded. Although they were still developing, they learned that the best way to avoid lies was to not do things that would require a lie to be told in the first place. Their life lesson was learned the hard way. But nonetheless, it was now part of their own personal oaths. After realizing these boys were not going to just tell Hanson, tell Hanson what he wanted to hear, nor agree with his directions to cover up the truth, he ordered his security staff to, Im to involve the real police. That deserves being repeated to clarify. After realizing these boys were not going to just tell Hanson what he wanted to hear, nor agree with his directions to cover up the truth, he ordered his security staff to involve the real police. Unfortunately, the boys were ultimately charged with the following charges. Entering the campground without an adult, camping without supervision, being in the campgrounds after permitted hours, operating a boat slash watercraft without parental permission, and the biggest charge of all, general trespassing. The local police were frustrated with the boys claiming they went to Zoo Island. They were easily and honestly convinced by the rescue helicopter team that the boys were just full of filthy deceit and deception. When they went to trial, the judge in court added the charge of perjury for lying in, in a court of law and sentenced them to four years in juvenile jail. This was a hard but much needed lesson in consequences for their action. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. For the boys, even their time in lockup taught them many other life skills. It also gave Ronnie time to write, John time to draw, Jeremy time to dream, and Dave... Well, Dave lifted weights in the yard in addition to learning that fights don't always solve or win an argument. He knew he lost several. He was on different turf now, no longer the biggest, roughest, toughest, baddest, strongest. He was also not the dumbest, that was for sure. A few Bullies enabled Dave to see how unpleasant it was to be on the other end of that kind of behavior. Rather than becoming callous to it, he rose above that kind of immature immaturity his fellow inmates displayed. As Ron wrote about the trip, he took some creative liberties by including hidden passages they found. That was Jeremy's favorite part. While John drew pictures to illustrate their adventures, Ron used the most descriptive words possible, sharing and documenting things that could only be truly believed by actually being there. The whole while, Ron's main inspiration was right there in his pocket, Tina. She was no longer able to enjoy Quasi's milk, but lived off of the crust of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and, and occasional strips of bologna peeled from what the juvenile jail fed Jeremy, John, Dave, and Ron. She was so small. Oh, 
my page jumped where am I at? <laughs> she was so small, her present was me never made known by anyone but those four boys from Zoo Island, the big dog Zoo Boys. There were so many other things that the boys just kept secret. Their life experience didn't end on Zoo Island or after being punished, locked up in jail. It actually had only just begun. The next adventure would be Zoo Boys vs. Kid Eaters, coming soon. The end. Well, that concludes it. I'm going to um, add up all the length of each video so I know the full running time. And in the description, you'll see the index and all the chapters and also the link to the written uh, published version of it. That's um, in edit right now. It's the end of September or mid-September 2020 right now. And my daughter Kiri is going to be editing it. And Olivia is going to be giving me more illustrations for it as well. Uh, apparently, and, and this will change with um, when Kiri edits it, but it is over, it's over 69,000 words if I uh, looked at that correctly on my blog. Um, so it's a really large story. I wasn't going for too short or too long or anything like that. I just wrote it uh, as it came and as it unfolded. And I wasn't uh, trying to make it real long or to to shortcut it or, or jip it and rob it of being as long as it needed to be to tell the story. And uh, already I am getting ideas now for the Zoo Boys versus the Kid Eaters. Um, but I'm not going to reveal that right here, right now. I'm just going to start writing it and uh, write it as it comes. So thank you so much for listening. In the description, you'll find all the links and more that you could ever want uh, or need for all of this. Once again, thank you for listening.